I'm Ben Canning. This micro lecture is on heat flow and thermal equilibrium. As always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, one to two sentence summary, and to do your follow-up questions on Google Forms. So to start this off, I want you to imagine we took a hot piece of metal, kind of like this guy right here, um, and we put it into a bucket of water. Uh, generally speaking, what would happen to the metal? What would happen to the water? Think about it for a second. All right, hopefully you realize that since the metal is hotter or has a higher temperature, um, energy is going to flow from it into the water. Um, and that if we left the metal in long enough, eventually they would actually reach the same temperature. Uh, well, when two things are in contact with each other, um, thermally speaking, uh, and they change temperature until uh, they reach a common temperature, we then say that those two things are in thermal equilibrium. So here, the metal um, having... Um, a higher temperature uh, would essentially um, give off heat or transfer heat uh, to the water until they were reached the same temperature. Um, and at that point, there would be no net exchange of heat, uh, meaning that if there is any transfer of heat or thermal energy, that essentially there's the same amount going each direction. It'd be kind of like if you and a friend decided to trade dollars. It's like you give them one dollar, they give you one dollar. Effectively, you're both the, at the same point as you were before. Um, the same thing goes. At thermal equilibrium, it's not that there's no energy moving at all um, or transferring. It's just that there's the same amount going each direction or in however many directions there are. Um, so heat flows from high temperature to low temperature, just to recap, um, until things reach uh, what we call thermal equilibrium. So we have an image here to kind of represent that, um, where a block has a higher temperature, and so particles are moving around more. Um, this one has a lower temperature, so particles are moving around less. When they're brought in contact with each other, um, the molecules in this one will push up and vibrate against the molecules in this one, um, and eventually transfer some of that kinetic energy or movement at the molecular level to the block on the right. Um, but because this is a movement of energy, um, we're not creating any new energy. Any energy that block B gains had to come from block A, uh, meaning that there's the same amount of energy present both before and after, or in other words, energy is conserved. Um, so this is really just an application of the idea of conservation of energy, um, but down at a molecular or particle level instead of at the macroscopic level or object size level, human size level. Um, so we can kind of apply this to uh, another scenario. So we imagine uh, we had two cups of water. One was hot water, one was cold water, um, or relatively cool water. Uh, and if we poured equal parts of water into each one, so let's say um, two ounces of hot water and two ounces of cold water, uh, what would the resulting temperature be of our mixture? Take a second, think about it. All right, hopefully you realize it would mix to 50 degrees Celsius. Um, so in simple cases, meaning equal amounts of the same thing, um, an equilibrium temperature is just the middle temperature, meaning it's literally the average of the two directly in the middle. Um, now, that doesn't always happen. So you can imagine if we instead had extra hot water, um, the equilibrium temperature would end up being warmer than 50 degrees. And if we had extra cold water, it would actually end up being cooler than 50 degrees or a lower temperature because we have more cold water than hot water. Uh, to figure out the temperatures in each of those cases, you could actually do a weighted average would be how you do it. Um, the reason why that works is because we're still working with water in both cases. But this gets more complicated if instead of mixing water, we're mixing a piece of metal with water or something along those lines. Uh, to do the math for the equilibrium temperature on that requires um, some additional equations and ideas that we'll explore in future videos. Um, another thing to note before we sign off here, um, is that because energy is conserved, no matter how we mix these two things, we could never get water hotter than 75 degrees or colder than 25 degrees simply by mixing. Um, mainly because really what we're looking at is kind of like what is the average amount of energy of the molecules in each one. Um, and so we can't really get extra energy out of something that um, uh, is at 75. So we can't go above that because uh, essentially that is the the max amount that we get or the max amount of average kinetic energy at the molecular level that we get or start with. All right, that's it for this one. Three more bullet points worth of notes, one to two sentence summary, and do your follow-up questions on Google Forms, please.